All right, so this room looks pretty interesting. Very cool. Ooh, what is that? What is that? All right, so as you can see, we are in New Woodstock, New York. I have never sourced in this city before, so it's always exciting to go someplace new. This particular house was built in 1870. It's the second day of a four day sale. So I couldn't go yesterday because of family responsibilities, but I think this is the one right here. Yes, it is. So we just got to get parked and check out what's inside this house. All right, so here's our house, 2,335 square feet. Definitely looks like it's from 1870. <laughs> um, a lot of character to it. Let's take a look around here. Some people have been telling me they like if I give you a little tour around the house before we start. So just to give you a sense of the backyard area, which is pretty cool. Looks like there's a nice old shed back there. I love the red sheds. Just such a cool look. And, um, oh, they got a nice little um, patio here on the back that's uh, enclosed with these really nice old windows. Very neat. So, yeah, we haven't done uh, a second day uh, attendance of the estate sales in a while. Uh, we used to do that a lot, but then we started going to the first day. So um, apparently more floors are going to be open next week, which I'm not sure if I could go to. So I just got to go to whatever opportunity I have. So they said I could head in early. So let's go in on the second day. All right. It's almost time. In just a few minutes, we're going to walk on through those doors. All right, so we are in, and this is the uh, room to the left of the front door. Definitely, I could tell you, has a nice uh, old feel to it. So we've got a bunch of stuff to look at here, and then there's uh, some more rooms over that way we have to go to. So let's take a look at, oh, I always like seeing a buck bin. So, Let's take a look in the buck bin. Let's see what we got here. All right, let's see here. Ooh. Okay, so I love the old chalk boxes and this one here has not been opened. Yeah, you could see it's still sealed. I love looking for these. People like to uh, collect these and they like to display them and they also like to use them so person getting this would be guaranteed that they're getting a fresh box uh, something that's often overlooked in terms of value this is not Crayola by the way it's uh, Binny and Smith uh, a sealed box like this uh, has a market price of uh, around like 22 to 30 bucks, maybe a little more sometimes. So it just depends on how many are available at the time. So that's that's great for a dollar. We're gonna pick that up. All right, so let's put that in the box and give it our first double tap of the day. And over here, you can see we have some Crayola colored chalk boxes. Now, these are not as old as the Binny and Smith. Uh, you could see this actually has a date on it on the bottom. It's 1985. These are not as valuable. Something like this would go for like 10 bucks a box. Now, if both of them were in great condition inside, and you always have to check if they're open because these are not sealed. See, like these are uh, these are all intact. The sticks. So that's good, but it wouldn't be worth picking it up for one. So let's check the other one out. This one feels lighter. So I think we're gonna have some problems inside with this one. Let's take a look. So, oh yeah, you can see it's all broken up uh, inside. So that's a problem. 
So because I'm gonna pass, it's not worth it for one box. It would have been worth it for two, but oh well. All right, let's keep looking. What is this? Well, crayon erasers? <laughs> that is, that is cool. I have never seen these before. Have any of you seen crayon erasers before? That is just really interesting. Let's see what we've got. Let's see what we've got inside here. Let's take a look at these. I've never seen a crayon eraser. Hold on a second. Um, here, I'll empty it. Oh, they're made by... Oh, nope, they're not made by Crayola. I thought it said Crayola on it for a second, but no, look at this. So you could erase green crayons, pink or red, blue, and yellow. Wow. <laughs> That's very interesting. Okay. Wow. All right. Well, today's bringing me back to elementary school days with these first two picks, but give another double tap. Off to a good start in this dollar bin. All right, so continuing our dig in the dollar bin. This one's pretty interesting. Look how old school that is. Mallard School Crayons. Now you see it says wood covered. They're not actually crayons like you know we would traditionally think of them. Um, they're actually, as you can see, they're they're wood colored uh, pencils actually. So uh, that that's all they are. Uh, but uh, these actually aren't uh, worth that much, even though they look cool. Uh, about $10, $11, something like that. So, yeah, I'm going to keep it here unless I could find something else to pair it with. There are some matchbooks, which if you could find them in bulk, I suggest picking them up. Uh, this one here, I'm going to add to my uh, lot that I already have at Primetime Treasure Headquarters. So I'll just toss it in there because I like... Uh, Princess Diana, Prince Charles stuff, so that's pretty neat, so we'll toss that one in there. But uh, that's why I'm passing on some of these, because you know I already have so many. Um, this is something I'm on the lookout for more now, uh, paperweights. This one's a pretty cool clear one, but as you can see, uh, there's damage and irregularities on the top here, unfortunately. But uh, otherwise, I would have picked this one up. That's a shame. Really cool, like a teardrop Hershey Kiss effect in a way. <laughs> All right, so let's keep digging in the dollar bin. Looks like we've got a blue bag here with some more matchbooks in it. So let's see which ones we have inside of here. Um, let's see here, this one's pretty common. I come across this one a bunch. Um, oh, this is good, Tiki Lodge. Anything Tiki, uh, people collect that. It's definitely vintage. You can see it's Salem, Oregon. And hopefully it's complete. Yes, it is. All right, good. So what I'll do is I'll just put these all in the bag. Because since it's in the bag, you know, all of them would just be a buck. So we'll put them in there and, you know, we'll just we'll just get this lot now. So we'll uh, toss the Princess Diana one in there too. You know, we'll just let the vendor know. But I'm pretty confident that the whole bag of this stuff would just be a dollar. All right, so now that i found this blue bag that we could just put all this stuff in for a dollar, I figured I'd scoop out the rest of the matchbooks now from out of there. So the situation has definitely evolved. So yeah, we'll just uh, pick all these up, toss them in there for the one buck price. All right, so we're gonna keep digging in here. Uh, you saw the flashcards earlier, so I'm passing on them because the box is damaged and they're uh, pretty nondescript. There's, you know, nothing in terms of imagery on either side. Um, this one here, which I sort of unceremoniously tossed to the side, uh, this is a cross-stitch pattern. I think it's for uh, pillow sheets, but it has the word daisy on it, and that drew me to it, of course. So, uh, And you can see here, this is actually sealed uh, in the back. It also has uh, some other type of instructions for something and some loose threads. So it pays to hunt within the bag because that's what you know, allowed me to see that this actually is sealed. So something like this, yeah, go for like 15, but very easy to list and ship. So uh, we'll pick this one up for a dollar as well. All right, keep digging, and 
this is this is interesting. Uh, it kind of has Christmas vibes to it. There's a name on it. I don't know if this is a last name. P a k k e r. Um, hmm. It kind of looks like kind of looks like a typewriter, but I don't think that's what it is. Maybe it is. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Made in Taiwan. It's wood. Interesting piece. I think we're just gonna pick it up and do a little research on it. So I just looked up this word P A K K E R in Google Translate, and it actually is a Danish word for packages. I don't know if that relates to this, but it's interesting that it says packages, and it does give off Christmas vibes. So we'll see. All right, found a few more things here. Uh, there's some Yahtzee score sheets, not too many of them. They date back to 1956. It has a crease on it. Sometimes I'll pick them up if there's a lot of them and if they're in better shape, but this isn't gonna go for too much. So I'm gonna leave these here, but be on the lookout for old score sheets because you know, sometimes they could be pretty desirable depending on what they are, but Yahtzee's pretty common. Um, we do have another uh, matchbook and, well, matchbox, and this is, Christmassy looking, so I like that. Italian looking as well, so it's a Salvador. There you go, Italian restaurant, Salvatore. So we'll pick that up. And uh, as I mentioned, I am definitely on the lookout for paperweights more, especially after following uh, Jocelyn Crazy Lamp Lady and seeing how well she does on them. This is gonna be my first foray into them. Uh, if it was glass, I'd really be excited. It's not, it's like a hard uh, plastic. It's old though, and I like that it has the multicolored flowers embedded inside. Uh, they look like uh, different flowers, not the same type. So if you know anything about the type of flower, let me know in the comments, because that's something I'm still working on. But interesting, look at that, isn't that pretty? And it has the pink base, that's nice. And look at the sticker on the bottom, it's interesting. We've talked a lot about made in China, um, but I'm gonna try as much as I can to zoom in on this. If not, I'll put a, um, I'll try to get like a screenshot I could put on there uh, that you could see it in bigger font, but it actually says made in Taiwan, Republic of China. So um, that indicates this is you know, an older item, because they don't normally say that Republic of, of China. So, you know, it's different than made in China. So interesting, it definitely has some age to it. And we'll pick both of these up as well. So we've done pretty well in this uh, dollar box. I think we're pretty much done with it. But uh, this just goes to show, take some time, go through it. Uh, don't do what most people do with dollar boxes, which is to come over to them and just go like this and then just walk by it. You have to take the time to dig through it. And that's part of the fun of treasure hunting. And here's another matchbox hiding over here. All right, well, next to the dollar bin, we have this little basket, which is filled with playing cards. Uh, likely also a dollar a piece and the one that I like in here is this one this is vintage Hallmark uh, you've got the flower girl on here looks like Holly Hobby and I would say this is probably like a 15 20 dollar pack of cards so it's really nice imagery on here sealed is a big bonus so we're gonna pick these up as well. We're doing good with the smalls today. Every sale is different. Every sale is different. Now someone watching this is going to remember what's underneath these question marks. Do you remember? You probably had these when you were younger. Let's uh, open this up and see what is underneath these cards and they are animal identification flashcards. They are vintage though and so what you're hoping for something like this is someone is seeking animal identification flashcards and they're seeking these exact ones that they had when they were younger that their mom or dad threw out and they'll pay you like you know 15 to 20 bucks for them uh, just for the nostalgia of having them back again so if you remember having them when you were younger let me know it comes in the original plastic uh, bin it's got the old price tag on the back so we're gonna pick this up for the two 
All right, so this is a very interesting situation that I want to tell you about, and it's just something to really be careful of. So you can see here we have this awesome planter's glass container. It's got Mr. Peanut on it, highly, highly collectible, okay? Now, this would normally be something that would go for $150 or more. However, one of the other selling points about this is not just that it says planters and has the Mr. Peanut character on it and it's hexagonal, as you can see, six sides, but the lid is supposed to have a peanut shape handle. Uh, I'm gonna put a screenshot on top so you could see that. So what I think happened is that likely got misplaced or broken and as a result, they put this one on instead. And this one has some uh, chips on the side of it as well, on the side of the lid. And without having that peanut shaped handle, which is also made of glass, that's gonna be a major, major problem. So as a result of that, I'm gonna pass on it for the $50. If it had the peanut handle on it, I think I would have gone for it. But uh, so you have to be careful of uh, making sure that all of the elements are there because again that's a major selling point on this piece all right i just want to mention this because sometimes people will watch the video and they'll see a box and they'll say why didn't you open the box and sometimes i do open the box but i just don't show it because it's not something that is you know that valuable or anything uh, but just to give you an example you know these are some old poker chips but there's nothing you know distinctive about them it's eight bucks as you can see and it's not complete so you know something like this i normally wouldn't show but i just want to make that point when you're watching the videos just keep that in mind uh, there's some other things on the table i'm going to pass on the decorative ducks for 20 a piece uh you know you can see some of the stuff is priced pretty high like 75 on that and then um, this here, I think it's probably been sitting around uh, for a couple reasons. Some people might not know what it is, and then also it has a name on it. Uh, fortunately, the name is common. It's Tom. <laughs> I've never met a mean person named Tom. <laughs> Every single person in my life I've met named Tom is always nice. So if you're out there watching this and your name is Tom, this one's for you. I'm going to pick this up. This is a log splitter. I used to use these all the time because uh, I used to uh, cut and chop my own wood. I have woods in my backyard, as you've seen. So you just put this little piece in um, a little crack in the wood, or you just make one your own, and then it just you just hit it down with a um, you know, sledgehammer or whatever you're using, and you just smash it right open. And um, you know, this just means that it's a, a buck having the green... Uh, sticker on it. So we're gonna pick this up and hopefully someone named Tom is watching this or uh, Someone named Tom is searching for this online and, and wants it either as a gift Christmas good stocking stuff or, or whatever It is cast iron and it's flaking a little bit, but someone could always repaint it if they want So that's really not a big deal anyway. So all right, let's pick this one up as well and add it to the box Take the sticker off too all right, now I did just want to show you this just to point out that I do learn from some of the things that you tell me in the comments section. So as you can see here, we have this big plant, which is priced at 25 bucks. Uh, but look at this over here. Now, if you remember in the past, uh, I found one of these and I called it a perfume bottle. And boy, oh boy, I really heard it in the comment section that it's not a perfume bottle, it is a plant mister. So here you go, right near a plant, which also helped me remember that's what it was. A uh, cool green bottle, I don't think that this is actually worth that much though, even though it's cool, uh, eight bucks for it. Uh, so I'm gonna leave it uh, here, but uh, just wanted to show you if you see it. Now, funny thing is, I do see some people who have this listed as a perfume bottle. I mean, you could use it for that. So, you know, because it, you know, it does mist and aromatize, but uh, just wanted to point it out if you see it. Uh, pretty cool item. All right. So there were some books and stuff over there I looked at. I didn't find anything uh, of interest. And then I moved over uh, to this area and I saw this planter, which 
really looks nice. I love blue, it's my favorite color. So if I were to have a plant, uh, this would be something I would put it in. I really like it. Um, it does have an artist signature on the bottom. Uh, I don't recognize the name. Uh, maybe one of you do, uh, but it could just be a hobbyist piece. Slight little chip there on the bottom, but not one that I see or feel on top. Uh, without being able to identify the artist, uh, I'm going to say probably maybe like a $30 planter or so. It doesn't have a price on it, but I would guess she'd probably charge like five, ten bucks for it at checkout. So factoring shipping and stuff, I'm going to leave it here. But I am looking out for those types of things more. Um, there's some broken pieces up top. Uh, sometimes, um, like if you look at this nutcracker here, one of the things that you could use as an indicator that something's missing uh, is just look for um, just, you know, markings of something that used to be there. So you could see there that the feet are missing on that one and that's why it's priced at $5. Or, you know, over here, you could see you've got this dragonfly you know, rock piece, but on the back you could see that's uh, most likely a modern price tag that's been taken off of there and it feels modern as well so I use those things sometimes when I'm looking around for stuff just to you know an indicator of something that might not seem quite right oh boy I cannot believe that this is sitting right here in plain sight check this out <laughs> this is a really nice old book. So remember when I told you that the house goes back to 1870. I mean, you could just tell from looking at this that this is just an incredible cover. Look at the binding on it. It's absolutely beautiful. And you could tell it's an 1800s book. And sure enough, when we open it up, one of the things we notice is that the binding is intact. It's a great selling point. Whenever you see these little protective tissue paper um, pieces inside, that's another good sign that you've got a nice old book. And look at this, this one goes back to 1889. And there's a name on here that's very important that you wanna make sure you put in the keywords. Look at that, Mark Twain, are you kidding me? There's, a, there's some people who have a version of this book listed and don't have Mark Twain in the title. And that's a big mistake. You definitely want to have that in there. If we look inside, it is in incredible condition. There's no staining of the pages inside. Um, there's a little bit of discoloration on the edges, but that's really not a problem. Um, you do have some illustrations inside. There's one little tear there, so we would want to disclose that. Um, there are some people who have this book on the market right now on eBay and uh, the prices vary. Here you can see there's some more pictures inside which you definitely want to include uh, in the listing. Uh, prices vary depending on condition. The best condition one uh, right now is at 55 plus shipping and this is much better than all of those so might be a little bit long tail but i love old books and this one i'm definitely going to add to the pile and you know put a you know price on it that's higher than uh, that one for the 55 and we'll see what happens with it um, hopefully katie reads is watching this uh, because i know she loves books and if you want to learn more about books go follow her over on youtube katie reads highly recommended Oh, and if you're wondering what the price of the book is, it's three bucks and less otherwise marked. And this one is not otherwise marked, so it's going to be three dollars. Yes, there are some postcards here for you ephemera fans, but they are modern postcards, unfortunately. So we're going to leave those here. All right, so that's where we were just for perspective and just turn our way around here. You can see this display case here. Uh, we have some glass salt cellars. Uh, they don't really go for a lot of money. You could pick them up online, you know, pretty cheap uh, for a lot of them. So even 
at a buck a piece, I'm going to uh, pass on them. Uh, there's some cool brass bells down here. I like this windmill one. Uh, just three bucks, but uh, it's pretty commonplace. These don't go for that much money. Uh, I like this one also. You ring a bell with me, but um, I just got to pass on them. Uh, the other stuff here, like that's a set for $25. I'm going to... I'm gonna pass on that. This is two bucks for this uh, teacup here, but it feels, it actually feels like plasticky. It doesn't feel like it's ceramic or anything. So that's probably why it has a $2 price on it. There's no maker's mark or anything. So and I think it's just a cheap uh, piece. So uh, with that, we're gonna move uh, in this direction here. Uh, there are some clocks um, this is a nice old one i know we have a lot of people here who like clocks but you can see uh, that's a hundred dollar clock right there uh, and then uh, this one over here is 25 this is a more modern quartz piece so i'm gonna pass on those but just showing you what's here and we'll move in that direction all right, so before we head out in that direction, uh, if you were wondering, yes, uh, there is a quilt here. I know we do have uh, some quilt fans in the house, but the price on it is 50, so that's why I'm passing on it. All right, so now let's go this way. All right, so this room looks pretty interesting. Very cool. Ooh, what is that? What is that? I love westerns and I don't even need to know anything about comps to pick this thing up. This is so amazing. Oh, it's it's on cardboard. Someone someone is going to want this and display this, put it in a frame. It has a little creasing on the edges, but that's going to actually be mostly hidden when it's framed. Wow, it really pops and it has nice vintage look. Look at the Ladies watching the guy riding that, riding that horse. Oh my gosh. Uh, by the way, that reminds me. Um, I've talked about this before, just in terms of my own favorite things. Um, my favorite movie of all time is a Western. It's The Good, The Bad, The Ugly. But I want to tell you about another one that a lot of people have not seen, but you should put it on your list. The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. All right, let's pick this one up and we're going to put it right here in the box. I absolutely love it. All right, so moving on from here, this is really cool. I love this painted duck scene on this piece of slate. Wow, that's really nice. It says love on it. Someone's really gonna like this. For $5, I cannot pass on that. And look at that, look at the vintage of this on the back you could tell from the dust uh, yes it does have some residue on here but that's from something old um, so you know there's all these indicators you you look at uh, to help you when you're hunting and wow this is this is another one I love this room already all right well the person here really liked these black and white ducks uh, this is also vintage but uh, I'm gonna pass on it um, it just it just seems kind of flimsy and uh, just doesn't doesn't speak to me, but this one does check this out. This is really neat This is nice and strong and sturdy, but ah, uh, darn it. There you go. We got a beak chip right there So darn it. Yeah, you always got to check for those things and sometimes they're sneaky because yeah it, it, Like from the side you might pass on it, right? You might not even notice it But that's why you know exploring in all directions is is helpful, but yeah too bad man this person really liked these black ducks um, now that's not broken that is actually meant to be like this it's like a walking stick the problem though is that it doesn't screw on tight when you turn it around so that's a problem you're trying to walk around with it but yeah interesting but we're gonna leave it we're gonna leave it here because this head is just gonna fall off all over the place <laughs> all right let's leave you here all right so let's see what else we have here uh the amish couple that's uh pretty common uh this is a modern piece here so we're gonna skip that um this daisy uh 
um, vase here, that's also a modern piece. Purple glass looks cool, but it's not made of good quality and has a defect on the bottom. And uh, we do have some a dishware and glassware and stuff over here. Uh, this one looks pretty cool with the flowers on it. It's uh, Royal Wattina or Vatina in, uh, it's from Austria. Uh, cool floral design on it, but I think this is about retail on it for the 35. So yeah, most of the stuff here is, uh, is priced up. All right, so I just pulled back from over there and what are the chances that I would find another Minton plate. Do you remember the Minton cockatrice plates that I found that were so valuable? I found this set for 20 bucks. Uh, this one's a little bit different. Now, um, one of the things that's important to pay attention to with these plates is the degree of fading from the coloring, uh, which would be affected by how much it's previously been used and washed. And what makes this one valuable is this right here. This is a cuckoo bird. Now, the problem is that the imagery has been faded off the cuckoo bird, and you could even see that along the edge, a lot of the coloring has um, faded, right? You know, you could see that right there. Uh, and so, if it didn't have the fading, it's not as valuable as the cockatrice ones. This one would be about 40. Um, you know, lowest you could get one right now would be around like 30 ish, but with the fading on it, it's gonna just really cut down on the desirability of it, so it's not worth it. Um, even for the five, so I'm just gonna leave it here. Someone else might like it, but uh, but be on the lookout for the mintons and pay attention to the uh, coloring on it. Also, the ones with animals and birds on it, those are the ones that are uh, more desirable. Um, this card is very glitzy and colorful. Very interesting. Nice for the Christmas time of the year in the manger. But uh, let's see here. A look on the back there you can see the price on it is 25 so over here though you can see that we have some other nice cards and uh, oh it looks like there's some more in here hey prime time why don't you take this card off and look inside oh look at this look what we have here she is gorgeous absolutely beautiful <laughs> look at this oh my gosh why don't you use those big hands and flip me over all right so watch over here let's see if there's oh no writing inside and uh let's see no writing inside that one. Oh, look at a cute dog we've got the dog here some flowers it comes in the original box and price is two bucks Perfect. So we'll pick that, sell them off as a lot. And um, yeah, I think this is a, definitely the, the deal to go for. And we'll leave that one right there. This one here, 10 bucks on the uh, jackass. This one here looks like a hobbyist piece. So we'll leave this one right there. This one gets a good old prime time double tap. Now, for those of you who like furniture, this is a really cool Wooten's uh, rotary desk. Uh, there is one right now on eBay for like $4,500 plus like $600 shipping. That one's in perfect condition though. This one here, as you can see, has uh, some cat scratches, uh, which has taken away some of the wood here. I mean, that stuff could be repaired. Uh, these uh, the sides here are supposed to swivel in so that it will look like this over here uh, so it will close in on itself um, but that one is stuck right now so it would need some repair it's obviously very heavy very big uh, but you know I'm just pointing this out um, because if you have the space and you have the handy skills you know you could pick this up for a hundred bucks you know and you know, do a good local flip on it or something. So right now, um, that's just more than I could take on and handle. Uh, so I'm gonna leave it here. Um, there's some interesting pieces on here, but you always have to check the backs. You know, this is just a buck, it's a hobbyist piece. And you could see here that, you know, it's been busted out on the back. There is a cool nautical lamp, but the price is 150, so I'm gonna pass. So, you know, it's just, a, uh, you know, as, as many of the sales that you've seen recently, you just really have to you know, 
pick and choose and be careful. Uh, if you're gonna go in on something that's high price or higher price, you need to be sure that you could uh, protect yourself and do a good flip on it. And if you're wondering about the bottles, I do have an interest in bottles because uh, when I do my metal detecting, one of the things I come across are a lot of uh, old bottles. So we call them dug artifacts. Uh, some are more common than others. Uh, the Milk of Magnesia one actually isn't that uncommon. I love the blue bottle and stuff, but it's just not that valuable. There's just, just imagine how much Milk of Magnesia was made back in the day. Um, this is a cool one, uh, the distillery bottle, but yeah, it's priced at close to retail at 20 so I'm going to pass on them. Uh, also, keep in mind that you know, people will purchase bottles without uh, stoppers or tops on them, but if you could find them with the stoppers and tops on them, those are much more desirable in general. And moving from here, this is a good example how you have to be careful on pricing. Uh, $50 for all the marbles. Uh, I have not lost all my marbles, so no way am I buying that. Uh, we have tons of marbles at PTHQ. Uh, not because I bought them for a reselling, but Mrs. Primetime uh, collects marbles. And so we have them out for display at different places. But um, yeah, you can find them much cheaper other places. So I'm gonna leave that here. Uh, there's a bookshelf here. I did look through it, didn't see anything on it that I liked. All right, and so we also have this uh, rack here, which mostly has clears on it. Not really anything I'm interested in. Most of the stuff looks pretty nondescript to me. Uh, there is this bunt pan down here though, which actually is, I, I would say this is the most solidly constructed bunt pan I've ever held. Uh, it's from Northland uh, Aluminum, really, really strong. Uh, you can see it has a green coloring on it. Some uh, fading on the bottom. But the thing is, uh, you could get this for like 17 bucks online. It's heavy. This is a heavy pan. Um, I don't have any doubt that it's good quality. It would make great bunt cake, but uh, it is not worth picking up to flip. So be careful with the bunt pans. All right, so the estate sale dealer said that I could go upstairs and do a video to show what it looks like. It's not open right now for sale. Uh, that's going to be next weekend. Just There's just so much stuff up there they have to go through. So they're taking a break. They've been working up there like crazy today, uh, trying to get it ready. So we still have a few more rooms down here to explore, but I'm going to take advantage of the opportunity and go up, and we'll do a little preview and see what's up there. So let's just turn the camera around and head straight up. All right, so let's see what we have up here. Oh, I see a bookshelf. So there's definitely uh, some interest there I would have exploring that. But again, right now it's not for sale. Let's just take a look around. This is the primetime estate sale tour. So we're doing house tours now in the videos. I think that's one of the ways the channel's evolving. A little tour of the property before the sale. And uh, even if uh, there's parts not accessible right now, I can still give you a little tour of the room. So very cool. If you see things that you're interested in uh, that you think I should come back and grab, definitely let me know. Or if you think I should have grabbed. Um, thing is, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to make this sale next weekend because I have family coming over. And if I can make it back, it would only be on the Sunday because I definitely have family stuff going on on, on Saturday. So uh, hopefully I don't see anything that I'm like dying to absolutely have. There's some more painted slate. There's some clothes in here. Look at this, again, more with this black duck, the black and white duck. Okay, wow, I mean, very cool. This is a cool closet, right? Check this out, let me, again, let me just bring this back here. So it's just so much different than like modern closets, like the space in here. This is very interesting, you know, to see inside an 1870s closet space. It's just such a different feel. It's just, <laughs> it's interesting. All right, let's, uh, let's go out this way. They really are doing a lot of work. So there's a lot of clothes, blankets, um, you know, little tchotchkes and stuff. I mean, this would probably be a lot of fun to dig through. And look at all the ephemera that's in here. My gosh. I mean, who knows what's what's in there? Let me just see if I can take a little. Ooh, look, we got old photos. 
and stuff. So yeah, there could be some interesting things in there. I don't know. Let's take a sneak peek. Let's see what else. Eh, some arts and craft projects. So you never know. You really that's something you really have to do a deep dive on. Uh, some nice figurines back there, ceramic pieces, more ephemera stuff, some playing cards, more black ducks. You know, I'm gonna have to learn the name of this black and white duck now because it's gotta have a name to it. You probably know and tell me in the comment section. All right, um, there's an old Mickey and Minnie Mouse high chair, a Ouija board. People freak out on my channel if I ever pick up Ouija board stuff. Um, I did that once and my gosh, I did not hear the end of it. Look at, oh, look at this bathroom. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at the wallpaper with the, with the uh, plants and stuff on it. Interesting, look at the um, built-ins. Wow, ooh, those go back pretty deep. Those go back pretty deep, these drawers. Oh my gosh, there's probably all sorts of vintage linens and stuff. So they gotta clean some of that out though. They're, they're working on it. You know, I do appreciate that. If it's like dirty and stuff and you know, unsanitary, I appreciate them taking the extra time to clean it up. Let's go into Lisa's room, see what Lisa. I, I actually, this is something I would try to take off because that is so cool. And I would try to sell that to someone named Lisa. Look, Lisa was pretty cool. Lisa, Lisa had it going on. Look at Lisa's a wallpaper, Jesse shops who you have to follow her on Instagram, by the way. She is one of my absolute favorites and she just loves bright colors and cheerful things like this. She'll cheer up your day. So go follow her on Instagram, Jessie Shops, J-A-S-S-Y-S-H-O-P-S. -S -S she would have a room like this. I definitely think so. And she would have a hat like this that says, I believe in elves. I know she would. That's something I would pick up. Oh my gosh, there's a lot to explore. Hmm, should I come back, try to come back for a part two? Who knows? Who knows if I'll be able to do that? Let's see here. There's a lot of stuff to dig through. Hmm. There's vintage clothes to look through. Uh, let's see what else. Um, what's in here? Diet Pepsi Cola box. What they got in there? Casanova Lake. That looks like it's a blanket. Casanova. Very, very pretty area. Here in Central New York, if you've never gone by, definitely check it out. Uh, I went to a restaurant there when the Crazy Lamp Lady came in town, uh, which is really nice. So Casanova, very, very cool place. Uh, let's see. Let's walk out this way. And we also have, oh, that's cool. Look at the vintage look on these faces for the babies and the bees. I thought one would be a bird, one would be a bee, a <laughs> bird's in the peas, but no. All right, is this room over here? This person liked crossword puzzles. I have seen some crossword books and you can see here, it looks like this might be a crossword pillow or something. So I don't know, but this person really loved crosswords. Uh, da, 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 da. Ooh, there's some more. Old Crayolas, old Crayola crayons. I was looking for more of that chalk. And I'm just trying to talk a little loud because there's music in there. I don't want to get a copyright strike. So that's the other room. There's some things in there. And I'll just give you, again, I got to talk loud. I mean, you know what? Maybe I'll put like a little music track over this to cover over the copyrighted music. So I don't want you to miss out on this. Wow, that was a lot of fun. Primetime estate sale tours have officially begun. So <laughs> this is uh, our tour of the upstairs is, uh, is now completed, but uh, we're gonna head downstairs, check out those other two rooms. And uh, you know, I may or may not be able to come back to the sale. You'll find out on whichever the next video is after this one. All right, so coming down those stairs, uh, there's this room here where they have the washer and dryer. Uh, so, there are some things for sale here, not too much. Uh, there is this little um, 
cabinet here with the different towels and stuff. I have been looking for different towel prints uh, that could be valuable, but most of the stuff seems pretty plain and standard to me. So nothing really jumping out there. Um, let's see, over here there's some bags. This is a nice Egypt canvas bag, nice bright colors on it. Uh, it's got the queen, queen Nefertari on the back, uh, but it doesn't go for that much. This would be like a $15 bag or so, including the shipping. So I'll leave it there. Uh, the thing I'm gonna pick up in this room, I think is this. I like this picture. Uh, it's nice and vintage, and I like the coloring on it. Let's pick this up for the two. All right, so let's check out this room. I put my box down ahead of time just so I could maneuver around easier. Uh, now, this bag with the pins on it, this would normally be something that I would pick up for the $10, but one of the things I want you to be real careful of when sourcing, you see this one here, it has the name of the um, commander in the police department. Um, if you try to sell pins like this, you can get in trouble with eBay and they could strike your account. So I just stay away from this type of stuff um, because it could be used for police impersonation. And so these other ones are like more uh, kind of standard American Legion one. So I'm going to leave them here. Um, nothing really jumps out to me on them. So uh, that's that. Let's move past um, this. I actually put the ottoman in the corner for the estate sale dealer. And, you know, she gave me access to upstairs for the video. So I saw she wanted to move back there. So I try to do her a favor and do a little uh, do a little manpower work here. I was telling you that they have crossword puzzles, but these books um they're really not worth much most of them in fact all of them actually are modern crossword puzzle books and some of them have been uh, partially completed already there are some comic books here uh, but you could see they are pretty beat up um, don't pass up though on um, big lots of archie comic books and you know jughead which is related to archie because i do well selling those um, but you gotta you know put them in in, in bulk lots typically Police Academy. I remember having this as a kid. Remember the Police Academy movie? <laughs> All right, over here, we've got some double 12 dominoes. Those are pretty commonplace. They're not worth that much. But this, you know, I've said this many times, look for anything that has the Toys R Us label on it. And this is sealed, this is the game sequence. Uh, I think this came out in 95, yeah, 95. Five. Yep. So this is a great one right here. Um, this could go from like 40 bucks to 50 bucks plus shipping. So uh, we're going to definitely pick this one up for the $5. That's a nice buy. So let's put this one right over here. All right. So moving on from over there, uh, going over here. Hey, Mamacita. <laughs> she doesn't look too happy, but she does look cool with the jug on her head. So I always wondered how people do that balance, like a bowl of fruit on their head or a jug on their head. That's very impressive talent. So I'm going to pick this up. That's pretty cool. I have other figures like this, not one with the jug on the head. So. A cool piece, probably made in Mexico, so we'll leave this one uh, right over here on top of the box, keep it nice and safe. And then, let's see, more clear glass. Um, let's look at this back here. It's nice, I like the blue on it, it's five bucks. Check for a maker's mark on the bottom. Oh, yep, Williamsburg Pottery. Let's see, I'm looking for chips, feeling for chips as well. I don't see any chips. Don't feel any chips either. So yeah, we're gonna pick this one up. I'll put this right here in the corner. And let's see, these plates are not really jumping out to me. Let's see, are these Williamsburg pottery too? No, let's see. No, see these don't have maker marks on them. I really, it's much easier to sell them when they have the maker's marks. Uh, you know, this is cool. We're in November now, beginning of November. And these are some die cuts 
for Christmas time. They're wall hangings. See, so it has a little bit of um, yarn on the back. And let's see some of the ones in here. I want to make sure they're here because it's opened on top. So let's see what we have here. We've got this one. Actually, let's just just take them all out. So it'll just be easier. We've got this one here. Gotta be careful not to pop them out of there. We've got this one here. Let's see. See, it's very, it's it's tricky because you don't want to get them out. All right, we've got. Boy, this one's giving me a hard time. <laughs> Let's see here. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's the lead pair, fourth pair. So they're numbered in pairs. Got the third pair here. Okay, these are cute. Got the third pair. So there should be a second one somewhere. Someone was rifling through these because, let's see, let's hold it here. Um, yep, here's a second pair. Uh, these have some good monetary potential because they're vintage. I'd say like $40 range, somewhere like that. We've got the sleigh. And let's see what else we have here. I'm trying to hold it so it doesn't pop out. Oh, and some Happy New Year. And then we've got a Merry Christmas underneath. So, yeah, cool. Let's pick this up. Five bucks for this, for, the, for these die cuts. That's great. All right, now there's this House of Lloyd cat here on the bottom, which I would have picked up if it had the complete garland on the bottom, but it's missing uh, most of it. Uh, it would go for 20 if it was complete, but um, I'm going to leave it here for someone else. Uh, cute item, though, but uh, going to pass. All right, now back up here. Uh, this is a nice trivet. It has a German expression on it uh, about, you know, getting uh, old too quick and smart too late. And uh, has a, like a fox on it, so anything that combines like trivets and animals and stuff is is cool. It feels like it's made out of aluminum. It uh, should be an easy flip uh, for like 20 bucks. Very easy to list and chip. And um, I'm gonna pick this up for just a buck. All right, so this is something I really wanna point out because it just helps me remember this stuff better as I'm learning this uh, topic. Uh, this is something I'm definitely uh, looking for. And I want you to know about them too if you're not familiar with the glass item. So this is called a Jack in the Pulpit vase. Uh, it's named after the flower because of this splayed out look that it has. It's very distinctive. Some of them are worth a lot of money. Uh, shout out again to Crazy Lamp Lady because I learned about them by watching her uh, channel. So it's a great channel to watch to learn about these type of glass items. Um, five bucks, um, you know, decent price. Um, it's just not really brightly colored uh, and it doesn't feel like it has the greatest quality. It is glass. It doesn't have a maker's mark on it that I could see, but be on the lookout for these. I'm sure we'll find them in another video and find one that I really want to uh, pick up. But there's some of these that could go for, you know, well over a hundred dollars, hundreds of dollars even. So just look for Jack in the pulpit faces. All right, so moving on from there over here, um, Ephemera fans uh -oh. eat your heart out because we've got an entire box of Ephemera for five dollars. Definitely gonna pick oh it up. Uh, looks like we have some bridge scoring pad with a dog on it. That's pretty cool. Some of the thing, things we could combine. Uh, look at this. Some of this stuff is really old. Um, and look not used so this is nice i could either sell that singly or individually yeah we do have like some pads some tally pads that we could lot up oh look see i could sell a lot of two and we've got different kind of cards in here let's take an example look at some of the cards these are nice i love ephemera boxes like this so much fun stuff to to look through another bridge score pad it looks like it's mostly score pad so okay for five dollars though i'll definitely yeah i'll definitely grab these and here's another one here look at this the official system of contract bridge 75 sheets no writing oh look at this it has the rules and you could flip up like that it's like tabbed so that's interesting that's really nice this old piece 
And um, look at that, 1932. 1932. Okay. Yeah, let's get this one for five bucks for the whole box. That's my box. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, so this is the last area to walk in. Again, I put my box here just to um, maneuver easily. And uh, we've got a bunch of plates here, uh, but they want 50 bucks a set. They're not mintons, um, so we're gonna pass on these. They're just regular generic kind of floral plates, nothing with animals or anything like that on it. Um, Let's see here. There is a Donald Duck mold, but this is not that uncommon. It does have some fading on it. So we'll, we'll leave that one here. Um, speaking of Donald Duck, you could see here we have the Donald Duck uh, lid on top of this bottle, but these two things don't go together because this is actually a glass bottle for water. Uh, the juice would have been in a white container. So it's just another example of a lid mismatch. So be careful of those things. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Mm, nothing else. Jumping out here. Uh, oh, got some amp buttons. Pretty cool on there. Yeah, yeah, I love this stuff. I so, got a ton of it. Yeah. I like I have to try and stop myself at sometimes, you know. Yeah, yeah. I like it's great. I like vintage advertising related to yeah. um, extermination. Oh, do you? Really? Yeah, oh, yeah. That's yeah. so weird that you yeah. should have that. From. Yeah, it's one of my weird niches that yeah. I look for things in. I have mostly medicine stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's also popular. I have yeah. some spices, which are very. They're very pretty too. Yeah, absolutely. I like collecting that too. Thank you. Yeah, so um, the, it's actually a couple of the buttons still left in here. I'll show you, you can feel it. So there they are. So that's cool. You know, there are collectors for stuff like this out there. Uh, and again, it does display nicely in like a, you know, a case or something. So I'm going to pick this up for the $2. Love it. Right over here, you can see that there are some cups, um, glasses, nothing that jumps out again with the black ducks, black ducks. Oh, the loon, loon, there you go. Crazy as a loon, that's what they are, they're loons. Okay, all right, and there's another loon. There's a trivet with peppers on it. Ah, I don't feel like picking up any more trivets. I got the one, that'll probably go for 15, they want two. And, um, okay, there we go. A, a new loon, but didn't recognize it as the black and white, so. All right, let's see. Um, that's pretty much it with this kitchen area here. All right, so that just leaves this pantry area over here. Um, these are cool. I've picked things like this up, this stretched glass. They usually do them with soda bottles uh, at garage sales. I usually get them for like a buck or two. They want 10 on it. You could get like 25, 30 out of it. But I'll leave it here, even though it's cool. Um, but they do, these come on the market here and there. I'd want to be in it at a lower price. Um, let's see, it's a lot of China here. Again, I'm not buying bulk China right now. So we will leave all that China there. All right, now this piece here, which some of you have probably been looking at, I'm torn on what to do with. Um, part of me wants to pick it up. Um, it's really cool, you could put like, you know, plants and stuff in here. It, it, it's neat. Um, but you do have this piece here that, you know, looks like a chip, but it's weird. It's not like a, an edge chip. It's almost like a an area that's been gouged out. So, yeah, let's see. What is what is that there? Okay, see, that. I thought that might have been like a hair or something, but there's like a, like a, it's not a crack, but... There's definitely an imperfection in there, like crazing. I'm, I'm going to leave it, but yeah, I think you could go either way with that one. Um, let's see here. Uh, we've got this cabinet here. What's this? Wisconsin beer, the breakfast of champions. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, now, 
Hmm. Okay, so this does have a little chip in it, but my guess is that the person who's going to buy this, <laughs> maybe somebody even who buys it for themselves or buys it as a gift, someone who's drinking out of this as beer for the breakfast of champions is not going to care about that little chip. So I'm going to get this. <laughs> I just think it's cool. It's definitely vintage. This is not something I've seen before. So let's uh, let's add this into our into our box here. If you're wondering, that's not cast iron. It's just cheap plastic stuff. So I think that's going to pretty much do it. Um, I did look at the cookbooks here, but I don't see anything that jumps out at me that I want. We got a pretty full box. And um, yeah, let's check out and see the final price. Oh, and for those of you wondering about the Angry Mama microwave cleaner, which is pretty funny, uh, it's like a $15 piece. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it here. All right, folks, so the grand total for everything in this box came to $57. I mean, I'm going to get most of that back just from selling the sequence game. Uh, this is my favorite piece for sure, but let me know in the comments what uh, your favorite item was. Who do I see here? It's Daisy! <laughs> Why, hello Daisy. How are you? <laughs> this is this is one of Daisy's other hangout spots. I know you're used to seeing her uh, on her perch where she guards the treasures, but this is actually a nighttime view. I've not really shown too many nighttime views of Daisy, so uh, she likes to hang out in this little corner. She actually picks her own stuffed animals out and she uh, you know, brings them over here from her little area where I've shown you her plushes before. And Mrs. Primetime sits right here. She's obviously not, not here at the moment, but Daisy is dutifully waiting for her uh, to come upstairs. So I figured I'd get this little uh, Daisy Cam video for everybody. So yes, I do pass on along all of your uh, belly rubs and head scratches and chin scratches to Daisy. So definitely put some more in the comments and um, she's, she's spoiled rotten. So she's going to go to Betty by soon, but uh, just want to give you another funny view of Daisy. Every day she makes me laugh. All right, Daisy, say goodbye to all your fans. They'll see you at the next one. See you, see you at the comments. <laughs>